Are you ever naughty? Sometimes, I bet. Well, little Miss Naughty was naughty all the time. <coughs> she woke one Sunday morning and looked out of the window. Looks like a nice day for being naughty. <laughs> that Sunday, Mr. Uppity was out for his morning stroll. I'm going to knock his hat off. Just you watch. From behind a wall, Miss Naughty knocked Mr. Uppity's hat off his head with a walking stick. My hat! <coughs> Mr. Greedy had put a turkey in the oven for lunch. A rather large turkey. Oh, did I fancy that turkey? I'm going to pinch it. Oh, who's that at the door? Just when I'm about to eat my delicious lunch. <laughs> um, hello? Oh. oh, no! Poor Mr. Greedy. A sausage isn't much of a lunch when you've been looking forward to a whole turkey, is it? And do you know what she did that evening? She went to an expensive restaurant and ordered all the most expensive food on the menu. Uh, yeah, so I'll have oysters, caviar, fresh salmon, tea bone steak, well done, two plates of chips, lemon meringue pie and your best bottle of lemonade. And do you know what she did next? She sent the bill to Mr Mean. Naughty girl. What a shock. The next day, she met Mr Worry. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, oh, I see. What, uh, what, what is the problem then? Well, it looks to me as if you've got measles. Your face is covered in spots. Oh dear, dear. He worried off to see Doctor Makewell. Doctor Makewell listened to Mister Worry's tale and took a mirror from his drawer. Oh, there's, there's no spots. What a thing to say to me when it wasn't true. <laughs> Oh, what a lovely day, you know, ain't even dinner time yet. <laughs> the Mr. Men decided to hold a meeting. Something has to be done, announced Mr. Rappity, showing them his bent hat. Mr. Greedy thought. Um, yes. <coughs> he cleared his throat and spoke. Um, well, um, I, I've no, no idea. Well, I have, piped up Mr. Worry. I know what that naughty little girl needs, and and I know who can do it. Uh, really? Who? Uh, what? 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 Oh, that'd be telling, wouldn't it? Chuckled Mr. Worry, and went off to see a friend of his, someone who could do impossible things, like making himself invisible. That afternoon. Mr. Nosey was asleep under a tree. Little Miss Naughty crept towards him with a pot of paint in one hand and a paintbrush in the other and a rather large grin on her face. I'm going to paint the end of his nose red. But just as she was about to do this dreadful deed, something happened. The brush jumped out of her hand, dipped itself into the pot of red paint and began to chase Little Miss Naughty down the road. <laughs> Get off! Buzz off! Somebody invisible was holding the brush and pot. I wonder who. Mr. Jelly was waiting for a bus, all alone when, behind his back, little Miss Naughty crept up quietly. She had a balloon in one hand and a pin in the other. Oh, she couldn't do that to poor, nervous Mr. Jelly, could she? Oh, yes, she could. <laughs> He went off jump when this balloon goes pop. But just as she was about to make the balloon go pop, something happened. The balloon began to grow larger and larger as somebody invisible blew more air into it. Miss Naughty began to lift off the ground. Ah! Help! 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 She sailed away up and over the trees on the balloon until a bird picked it. Poor Miss Naughty. She fell into the duck pond. <coughs> Mr. Lazy was in bed, fast asleep. And outside his house, 
Little Miss Naughty stood by the front door. She raised her hand. Oh, she couldn't be so naughty as to knock on the door and wake up poor Mr. Lazy. Not at six o'clock in the morning. She couldn't. Oh, yes, she could. <laughs> then I'll make him angry waking him up this early. But just before she did, guess what? That naughty girl felt someone who was invisible tweak her nose. Hard. Ouch! And then her nose was tweaked again. Ouch! Ow! Get off! No! It's not fair! And little Miss Naughty ran home holding her nose. And after that, she was cured. No naughtiness at all. Mr. Worry went round to thank his invisible friend. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Impossible. He said, thank you for helping to cure poor little Miss Naughty. <laughs> My pleasure, laughed Mr. Impossible. But it did take a week. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> and, uh, and a tweak, he said. <laughs> She's blunt. Here, but they're late. I'm not here. Tickle. She's trouble. Sunshine. We're happy oh, timing. Need to be happy. She's little Miss Sunshine. I'm fussy and greedy. I'm a bum boy. I'm too late. It's magic. I'm me. I'm both of them. dream. Can they pass? Friend in impossible team. All friends together. The little Miss and Mr. Man. All friends together. Round and round we go. Back to back and side by side. Little Miss Shy just couldn't help it. Being shy, that is. She was terribly, desperately shy. She lived all alone in a little house quite a long way from where you live. In fact, quite a long way from where anybody lives. Thimble Cottage. Little Miss Shy dived under the table in terror. <coughs> the postman outside knocked again, loudly. Little Miss Shy, under the table, put her hands over her ears and shut her eyes. Anybody home? Um, anybody home? Well, I don't know, she must be out. The postman pushed the letter he was carrying through the letterbox and walked away. Little Miss Shy waited and waited and waited. Long after the sound of his footsteps died away, and then she waited some more. It was dark by the time little Miss Shy dared to come out. And there it was, on the doormat, the very first letter she'd ever had in the whole of her life. She opened it very cautiously. Ooh, it's from Mr. Funny. Ha <laughs> ha! You are invited, wrote Mr. Funny. Uh, to a party, ha <laughs> ha, on Saturday at three o'clock. And uh, it's going to be fun, fun, and fun. <laughs> Little Miss Shy was horrified. Fun? She looked at the letter again. I can't go. I can't. There'll be people there. People. In the whole wide world, there was absolutely nothing that frightened little Miss Shy as much as the thought of people. She worried about it all night long. But the following morning, she had made a decision. I'll have to go. It wouldn't be polite to refuse. But five minutes later, she changed her mind. I'll have to refuse. And five minutes later, she changed her mind back again. I'll have to go. But five minutes later, Guess what happened? That's right. She didn't sleep much that night at all. The following morning was Friday. Miss Shy awoke with a smile. 
she was going to the party. <gasps> right. I'm going. Yes, I, I've definitely decided I'm going. That Friday, little Miss Shy changed her mind 144 times. That's how many five minutes there are in a day. She was going to the park. She wasn't going. She was. She was. She wasn't. She was. 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 She but poor little miss didn't. Well, she couldn't. I can't. She, no, she couldn't. She just sat I there. A go. little tear rolled down her cheek. Oh, I should have gone. Four o'clock came. There was a loud knock at the door. The door opened. And in walked Mr. Funny. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't come. <laughs> so, so I've come to take you to the party. I, 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 I couldn't. Oh, no, no. Yeah, no, come, no, on, no, come on, come on. Oh, no, no. <laughs> You'll enjoy it, won't you? Come on, off we go. Oh. And he marched the blushing little lady off to his party. Everybody was there. Come to a party, come to a dance. Come out and play with us, just take a chance. Little Miss Shy, you seem so afraid. Try it before it's too late. Um, have some cake, said Mr. Greeley. Thank you. Kind. Mr. Tickle offered her two glasses of lemonade in, in a roundabout <laughs> sort of way. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mischief uh, made her jump with a noisy party squeaker. <laughs> <laughs> and she Sorry. dropped her lemonade Dear. all over oh. Mr. Small. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you're, uh, you're all wet. Oh, no, 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 don't mention it. Don't, don't mention it. Mr. Dizzy gave her a lovely party hat and uh. little Miss Shy began to feel better. <laughs> Everybody talked to her, and everybody was very nice. And yeah. gradually, the longer the party lasted, oh. bit by bit, <laughs> yes, little by little, eventually, <laughs> guess what happened? She stopped blushing, <laughs> and she actually started enjoying herself. <laughs> Tell you so! <laughs> you see, it's quite painless, really. You see, won't you, won't you let yourself go? <laughs> quite painless, really. <laughs> Once you want to get used to it, just see if it is okay. Little Miss Shy nodded and giggled. She was having the time of her life and only blushing a bit. And, and do you know who she met at the party? Mr. Quiet. Um, I used to be shy like you, he said. You never were. sack full of beetroots and then he fainted she's blunt it's a bit late and not here too cold she's trouble sunshine we're happy time in each other she's happy she's happy she's little miss sunshine I'm fuzzy and greedy I'm not going to go out I'm too late it's magic I'm me I'm both of it it's a dream it's a dream in the vast wind in the possible team all friends together the little miss and miss the man all friends together Little Miss Neat lived in Two Pin Cottage. It was called Two Pin Cottage because she kept it as neat as two pins. Little Miss Neat was a very tidy person, probably the tidiest person in the world. 
she couldn't stand the mess. <laughs> oh, I do like to see things neat and tidy, spick and span, if you know what I mean. Every day, she spent all day polishing and dusting and cleaning and making sure that things were in their proper places. I do like to see things in their proper places. One morning, little Miss Nita woke in a bedroom in Toopin Cottage and looked out of her bedroom window. It had been raining during the night and there was a puddle in the middle of the garden path. She gasped in horror. Oh, that is nasty. And rushed outside with a duster. Oh dear me, we can't have that. Water all over my nice clean path. She mopped up every drop of puddle and then she rushed inside and washed the duster and then she ironed the duster and then she folded the duster and then she placed the duster very neatly back in its drawer. Everything in Two Pin Cottage had its proper place. Yeah? Oh, I do like to see things in their proper places. Now, this story is about the time Little Miss Neat went on holiday. She always went away for one week every summer, and this year was no different. But do you know, she spent two weeks packing, and then she spent the whole day polishing a suitcase. Neat and tidy, clean and shiny, that's how things should be. At last, she was ready to leave Tupin Cottage, all spick and span and neat and tidy. Oh, I do hope it doesn't get too dusty while I'm away. She said as she closed the door behind her. But something worse than getting dusty was going to happen to Two Pin Cottage. Last week, Mr. Muddle had written to Miss Neat to tell her he was coming to tea. But being Mr. Muddle, he got into a muddle posting the letter. Actually, what happened was that when Mr. Muddle went to post the letter, he had the letter in one hand and a half-eaten cheese sandwich in the other. And you can guess what happened, can't you? <laughs> That's right, he posted the sandwich. A posted cheese sandwich. Um, oh, <laughs> it'll be nice uh, seeing Miss, um, <laughs> Neat again. He chuckled to himself as he walked home. This, uh, sandwich is a bit chewy. It was the day after Miss Neat left that Mr. Muddle arrived and knocked on the door. No reply. Uh, goodbye. He shouted. It should have been, hello, but he isn't called Mr. Muddle for nothing. N nobody home, he called. He pushed open the door. Oh, dear, he thought as he looked around. Oh, nobody home. Never mind, I'll make myself a, 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 a cup of tea and wait for Miss Neat. So he went into the kitchen of Toopin Cottage and made himself a cup of tea and waited. And waited and waited some more. Um, I, th I think I'll have another um, cup of tea. Now, where, where did I put the teapot? Uh, oh, where, where did I put the tea? <laughs> where did I put the milk, the sugar and the, um, the um, spoon? By the time he got to drink the tea, it was getting dark and time to go home. One week later, a taxi arrived outside Toopin Cottage. Here we are, miss. Home, sweet home, said the taxi driver. Oh, that was a lovely holiday, but I'm gasping for a nice cup of tea. Goodbye and thank you very much. She walked up a garden path. Not too many weeds, thank goodness. Miss Neat went in through the front door and looked around. Not too dusty. I think I'll make that nice cup of tea I promised myself before I unpack and, and tidy up a bit. But making a cup of tea after a Mr. Muddle visit isn't quite as easy as it sounds. Little Miss Neat eventually found the teapot, not in its proper place. In the refrigerator. And she eventually found the milk, not in its proper place. In the teapot. And the tea. And the sugar bowl. And the sugar. And the milk jug. And a cup. And the oven. A and a saucer. And the bread bin. But could she find the teaspoon? I can't find a teaspoon. She could not. The telephone rang. And little Miss Neat picked it up. Hello, Miss Neat here. At the other end of the line, Mr. Muddle suddenly realised he was holding the telephone the wrong way round, and he turned it the right way round. Um, goodbye, he said. Who's that speaking? It's you, replied Mr. Muddle. Miss Neat 
thought for a moment. Oh, it's Mr. Muddle speaking, isn't it? Mm, um, yes, replied Mr. Muddle, getting it right for once. And you paid me a visit while I was on holiday, didn't you? Mm, uh, yes, replied Mr. Muddle, getting it right for twice. Um, can I uh, come and see you now that you are um, back from the holiday? I suppose so. Goodbye. Uh, hello. Hello, said Mr. Muddle, and put the phone down. Little Miss Neat sighed a heavy sigh <sighs> and sat down in the armchair next to the telephone. Ouch! And she found the teaspoons Ooh. and the knives. <laughs> and the forks. And I don't think little Miss Neat will be taking a holiday next year. <laughs> Do you? She's blunt. Hey, but they're late. And not here. Tickle. She's trouble. We're happy timing. Little Neat. I'm silly. She's happy. She's little Miss Sunshine. I'm fuzzy and greedy. I'm the bottom of my ass. I'm true. It's magic. I'm me. What's that? Let me dream. Let's get a break. Get a basket. When did the possible team? Friday evening, the telephone rang in early Bird Cottage. Little Miss Late picked it up. Hi, Miss Late speaking. Oh, <laughs> hello, Mr. Silly here. <laughs> I've, I've been given some um, tickets, tickets, uh, boom, 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 for a disco tomorrow night. Uh, now, would, would you uh, would you like to come? <laughs> Great! What a wonderful idea! Oh, righty ho hell! <laughs> I'll I'll meet you at um uh, seven o'clock outside the disco. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye. And she put the phone down. Saturday arrived, and Mr. Silly waited outside the disco. He waited and waited and waited some more. Poor Mr. Silly went home. Next day. Mr. Silly went to see Miss Late. After a while, she opened the door. Hi, Mr. Silly. I thought we were going to meet outside the disco. Oh, dear. Late for this, late for that. Miss Late was late for everything. For instance, last year, do you know when she celebrated Christmas Day? January the 25th. One month late. Christmas. Oh, sorry. For example, do you know when she did her spring cleaning at Early Bird Cottage? In the summer. Three months late. Hi, happy Easter. Oh, <laughs> sorry. For instance, do you know when she went on a summer holiday last year? In winter. In December. In the snow. Six months late. Hi, wish you were here. Oh, sorry. Just along the road, almost next door, was Two Pin Cottage, where a friend of hers lived, Little Miss Neat. Little Miss Neat had decided that afternoon to go for a walk. As she came to Early Bird Cottage, she noticed Miss Late in her garden, up to her ears in long grass. She called over the fence to her. Hello, what are you doing? I thought I cut the grass. Miss Neat looked over the hedge. I think that you should have thought about that months ago. I tell you what, let's go shopping together tomorrow. Oh, great idea. 
I'll meet you in town on the corner of Main Street tomorrow afternoon. Two o'clock. Goodbye, I'll be there. The following afternoon, Little Bisneed stood on the corner of Main Street. It was two o'clock, and she was waiting for Miss Late. And she waited, and waited, and waited some more. Mr. Topsy Turvy walked past, backwards, of course. Afternoon, good. Finally, Miss Late arrived. Hi, I'm a bit late, I'm afraid. <laughs> A bit late. It's six o'clock and all the shops are shut. Sorry. And that's what happened all the time. It happened when Miss Late decided to take a job. Her first job was in a bank. But the trouble was, by the time she arrived for work, Hi. the bank had closed. Sorry. And that was the end of her first job. Her second job was working as a waitress in a restaurant. Mr. Greedy was in for lunch, and he glanced at the menu. Oh, good. Uh, uh, yes, I'll have um, um, everything. Twice with chips. He was still waiting to be served at seven o'clock that evening. So he went home. Sorry. And that was the end of a second job. Her third job was working as a secretary for Mr. Uppity. I'd like these letters typed before I go home this evening. It was four o'clock in the morning when Miss Late said... Finished! Yes, you certainly have. Sorry. And that was the end of her third job. But now, at last, Miss Late has managed to find herself the perfect job. Now she works for Mr. Lazy, cleaning his house mm. and cooking his meals. And little Miss Late, being little Miss Late, is always late for work. So she doesn't arrive for work in the morning. She arrives as Mr. Lazy gets up. Mm. Oh. Good, after good afternoon, Miss... Mm. Mm. Oh, sorry, sorry, Miss Late. Mm. Hi. And Mr. Lazy, being Mr. Lazy, doesn't have breakfast in the morning like you or I do. He has breakfast in the evening. Great. So you see, it all works very well. Very well indeed. Mr. Lazy. Mm -hmm. Breakfast. Mm -hmm. She's blunt. Here's my fair lady. I'm not here. Tickle. She's troubles. Sunshine. We're happy timing. Neat. I'm silly. She's happy. She's little Miss Sunshine. I'm fussy. I'm greedy. I'm the wrong boy. I'm too late. It's magic. I'm neat. I'm bossy. Daydream. It's category. Get the bus. Splendid impossible team. All friends together. Oh, they're looking for me. Splendid impossible team. Splendid impossible team. All friends together. Round and round we go. Back to back and side by side. Little Miss Helpful was one of those people who love to help other people. Nice day for helping someone. Do you know what I mean? I mean, for instance, like the time when one of Mr. Tall's shoelaces came undone. Now, if you're as tall as Mr. Tall, tying your shoelaces isn't the easiest thing in the world, as you can imagine. I say, let me help, said Little Miss Helpful, rushing up to where Mr. Tall stood looking down at his shoelaces. But somehow, she managed to tie Mr. Tall's shoes together. Oh! 
and he fell over. And if you're as tall as Mr. Tall, falling over hurts. Oh, my poor head. Oh, dear, poor old chap. Let me help. Little Miss Helpful tried unsuccessfully to lift Mr. Tall up. Come along, up the daisy. Oh, if only you weren't so tall. Little Miss Helpful puffed and struggled. And oh, then... Just a minute. She had an idea. Do go away. Be back soon. And off she went to find the wizard. Well, he wasn't home. But looking through the window, she could see his book of spells on the table. She crept into the house and turned over the pages until she found the spells she was looking for. Tall be small when I call small, small be tall when I call tall. Ha! Oh, think I can remember that. And she hurried back to poor Mr. Tall. Looking up at him and waving the wizard's wand, she cried, Tall be small when I call small. Oh dear. Mr. Tall suddenly shrank in front of her eyes. It worked! It worked! I say, the spells worked! Mr. Tall found it easy to get to his feet again. Thank you. Now, would you make me tall again, please? Squeaked Mr. Tall. But as she was trying to remember the other half of the spell, who should come along but Mr. Small? Ah, uh, uh, Mr. Small, meet Mr. Tall said Miss Helpful, introducing them both. <laughs> Tall my foot, he's as small as I am. Oh dear, now, now, hang on a sec, what was it? Um, ah, uh, tall be small and small be tall. No, 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 hold on, okay chaps. Uh, uh, tall be, tall be small and all be all. Uh, no, 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 hold on a sec, one moment. Um, small be tall and, no, uh, sm small bit all when I call small. Yes, huh? well, now you know what I mean about people like Miss Helpful. For instance, last year, Mr. Happy woke up feeling not very well. The doctor had to be called to Mr. Happy's house, which is on a hill by a lake. Oh, dear, said the doctor when he saw Mr. Happy. Looks like measles. Mr. Happy's face fell. Now, look here, you're, you're going to stay tucked up nice and warm in bed and get lots of rest and take this medicine three times a day. The doctor left the cottage and Mr. Happy settled down to sleep. He'd just fallen asleep when there was a loud knock at his front door. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear, groaned Mr. Happy and staggered off to open the door. Hello there. I've come to help. Oh, but look... Uh... But nothing. Off to bed with you while I get on with everything. Miss Helpful looked round the cottage. This place needs a good clean. Mr Happy had just dropped off to sleep again when Miss Helpful poked her head round his bedroom door. I say, oh, got a scrubbing brush? Oh, dear. Well, <laughs> poor Mr Happy. He had to get up and show her where it was. And then he went back to bed to try and sleep. Downstairs, little Miss Helpful stepped back to admire the kitchen floor she'd just scrubbed and on the soap and fell head over heels and got her head stuck in the bucket. And because she couldn't see where she was going, she walked into a shelf full of saucepans which fell all over the floor with a terrible cut. And because she couldn't see where she was going, little Miss Helpful stepped into one of the saucepans and got it stuck on her foot. And because she had to hop, she fell over against the refrigerator door, which fell open, and everything inside fell out all over Little Miss Helpful. Poor Mr. Happy awoke with a jump at the terrible commotion. He groaned, got out of bed, and went to the kitchen and opened the door. Oh, I just need to get to sleep. He couldn't believe his eyes. There, in the middle of a pile of broken eggs, and a scrubbing brush, and rolling saucepans, and a lot of water, spilt milk, squashed butter, and a piece of soap, sat little Miss Helpful, with a bucket on her head, and a saucepan on her foot. Help! I, I say, I say help! I can't see where I'm going anymore! Mr. Happy seized the bucket, and pulled as hard as ever he could, and pulled, and pulled. <laughs> The bucket came off the top of Little Miss Helpful's head like a cork out of a bottle, and Mr. Happy shot backwards like a bullet from a gun. 
He went flying through the kitchen door. He shot across the garden and straight through his garden hedge. He rolled down the hilly field behind his garden, faster and faster, and then... He finished up in the lake with a bucket on his head. And a little figure with a saucepan on one foot came half running, half hopping out of Mr. Habby's house and down towards the lake. I say, let me help. Ahoy there! She's blind. He's my belly. I'm not his tickle. She's troubles. We're happy timing. I'm silly. He's little Miss Sunshine. I'm fussy and greedy. I'm a little boy. I'm truly. It's magic. I'm me. Early one morning in summer, little Miss Magic awoke in the bedroom of Abracadabra Cottage, which was where she lived. She yawned a yawn and got out of bed. She went to the bathroom to clean her teeth. Squeeze, she said to the tube of toothpaste. And guess what? The tube of toothpaste jumped up and squeezed itself onto little Miss Magic's toothbrush. Honestly, Little Miss Magic isn't called Little Miss Magic for nothing. When she tells something to do something, it does it. She went downstairs to the kitchen. Boil. She said to the kettle. And it did. Toast. She said to the toaster. Spread. She said to the knife. And the knife jumped up and spread some butter onto the toast. Pour. She said to the coffee pot. Don't you wish you could make things do things like that? She was enjoying a second cup of coffee when there was a knock at the door. Open, she said to the door. And it did. There stood Mr. Happy, looking exactly the opposite. Oh, you don't look your usual self. What's the matter? Everything. Come in and tell me all about it. Would you like a cup of coffee? Yes, please. Pour, she said to the coffee pot. Sugar? Two, please. Lumps jump. Two lumps jumped out of the sugar bowl and plopped into the cup. Stir. And a spoon stirred Mr. Happy's coffee. Now, what is it? Well, it's it's Mr. Tickle. He's become absolutely impossible. What do you mean? Well, he used to go around tickling people every now and then. But now he's going around tickling people all the time, he sighed. Little Miss Magic looked at him. It can't be that bad. Cheer up. And of course he did. Come on, we'll go and see Mr. Tickle together. Open, she said to the door. Off to you. And off they set from Abracadabra Cottage. Mr. Tickle was in full cry. What a Monday morning he was having. He tickled Mr. Mean until he moaned. He tickled Mr. Greedy until he groaned. He tickled Little Miss Sunshine until she shivered. He tickled Mr. Quiet until he quivered. He tickled Little Miss Plump until she pleaded, and Little Miss Shy until she sobbed. Not to mention the postman, a policeman, the doctor, three dogs, two cats, and a worm. <laughs> cried Mr. Tickle as he spied Little Miss Magic and Mr. Happy. Anyone for Tickles? And he rushed up to them, reaching out of those extraordinarily long arms of his, with those particularly ticklish fingers on the ends of them. Little Miss Magic looked at Mr. Happy. I see what you mean. 
and winked. She pointed at Mr. Tickle's extraordinarily long white arm. Shrink, she said, and then she pointed to Mr. Tickle's extraordinarily long left arm. Shrink, and as you remember, when Little Miss Magic tells something to do something, it does it. Mr. Tickle's arms were suddenly not extraordinarily long. They were extraordinarily ordinary. Hey, that's not fair! You've spoiled my fun! Well, it might have been fun for you, remarked Mr. Happy, but it wasn't much fun for anybody else. Come and see me tomorrow, said Little Miss Magic to Mr. Tickle. There, she said to Mr. Happy. Happy now? And Mr. Happy smiled that famous smile of his. Oh, I'll say. Come on, I'll buy you an ice cream. And off they went to find an ice cream van. Ding dong, said Miss Magic. Oh, oh, um, two raspberry ripples, said Mr. Happy, laughing. On Tuesday, Mr. Tickle went round to Abracadabra Cottage. He knocked at the door. Open. And of course the door opened by itself. Oh. Hello, Mr. Tickle. Come in. I expect you'd like me to make your arms long again. Oh, yes, please. Very well. Mr. Tickle's face lit up. On one condition. Oh. His face fell. You're only allowed one tickle a day. One tickle a day? Well, well that's not much. Promise? Mr. Tickle sighed. Oh. Grow. And both Mr. Tickle's arms grew back to their original long length. Now don't forget, one tickle a day, or else. Oh. Mr. Tickle went out through the door. Goodbye. She said to him. Shut. She said, and of course, it did. Mr. Tickle stood outside Little Miss Magic's cottage. Oh, well, he thought. One tickle a day is, is better than no tickles a day. It was then that he saw one of the downstairs windows of Abracadabra Cottage was open. Hmm. <laughs> one tickle a day, he thought. And a small smile came to his face. One tickle a day. And on that Tuesday morning, as one of those extra ordinarily long arms reached in through the open window of Abracadabra Cottage, the small smile on the face of Mr. Tickle turned into a giant grin. <laughs> <laughs> One tickle a day!